so distinguished delegates participants and colleagues good afternoon and welcome to this virtual meeting on nc flexi enabling flexible electronics manufacturing in india i am sudhir kumar chief operating officer in national center for flexible electronics we are so excited to have you all here to participate in this virtual meeting organized by nc flexi and elsina together it gives me a great pleasure to grace all of your presence before we begin this virtual meeting i would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you who sincerely committed to this event to make it a success this event would have been impossible without the support of each and everyone present here it is a great moment to revisit and debate on enabling flexible electronics manufacturing in india with our esteemed panelists during the day a step forward towards self reliant india the schedule of the virtual meeting brushes upon a spectrum of exciting and benefiting themes that discuss the aspects of flexible electronics manufacturing in the country i just display the uh, the, the schedule as well for the benefit of uh, everyone just give me a minute i hope you all see that one i believe this meeting will be fruitful for everyone present here and thank you one and all and my special thanks to the miti ministry of electronics and information technology and itk for their great support to the center we have two important sessions today in the event the inaugural session followed by a panel discussion with five esteemed panelists the event would end with the concluding remarks from mr bansal co chairman elsina in the inaugural session we have a valuable topic to cover opportunities for manufacturing in india with flexible electronics by s sundar kumar ayer he would also give an overview of nc flexi before i invite professor ayer to deliver the talk it is my great pleasure to invite dr aswani a agrawal to say few words to address the delegates and participants on behalf of elsina just to introduce briefly him dr agrawal is the chairman northern region elsina and director government affairs applied materials india he is an industry veteran with 30 plus years in the industry including 18 years in hp he has rich experience in handling the enterprise and government segment for the tech intensive as esdm sector aswini is well known in the industry for his creative and breakthrough market development initiatives and has been the co-chair slash executive committee member for key co committees like cii fiki elsina etc over to you aswini ji thank you sudhir that's a mouthful uh, uh respected panelists dear industry colleagues uh thank you for joining us for this elsina and nc flexi center workshop to explore the potential of printed electronics a fast emerging field that is touching a large number of industries while the panelists will explore in depth this topic uh it is my pleasure to introduce the hosting organizations first of all nc flexi Uh, National Center for Flexible Electronics. It was created in 2014 by an act of grant, so to speak, uh, money from IIT Kanpur, uh, money from IIT, and uh, actions from IIT Kanpur, and it is right now the center of excellence for uh, the country in the field of large area flexible electronics. It is well positioned to be the fountain head. for creating india's domestic industry in this emerging sector i am aware of several pioneering projects including anti counterfeiting marketing smart packaging security specific applications and much more that the researchers at nc flexi have been working on and which are making their threshold in the uh, industry today i leave it to the panelists and the center to actually explore and develop this further elsina Uh, who i represent as the regional chair today at, at this point was created in 1967 uh, around the time uh, the moonshot took place and uh, it is a leading on ground electronic sector association in the country i would say it is the primary think tank of networked industry leaders which has been shaping the national policy of electronics and the contours of the industry at this point of time leaders like vinod paresh bhai and mr manwani have been shaping this industry in a in a very unique manner it's not just 
advocacy actions which have shaped the regulatory it is actions from the industry which are shaping this particular sector so i think elsina is perhaps the only association where the on ground actions like uh, source india or an on ground actual electronics manufacturing cluster that it has uh, catalyzed and its work in promoting the specs program is spearheading a huge competent industry wave at this point of time which i think will play a major role in reshaping our industry's uh, uh, fortunes going ahead so with this crisp, crisp intro i think i will hand over the session back to sudhir ji to take forward with the panel and with professor ayer and look forward to not just this session today but to create a series of session in future where we bring out different aspects of this uh, technology back for the industry for the regulators and make this industry happen so over to you sudhir yes thank, thank you aswini ji uh, for your suggestion and for your encouraging words now i would like to invite professor ayer to deliver the talk before inviting him a uh, few words to introduce him dr s sundar ayer is a professor of the electrical engineering department at iit kanpur he is currently the coordinator of samtel center for display technologies and national center for flexible electronics his area of research for the past decade has been focused on flexible photovoltaic technology his r&d team has demonstrated successfully pv modules on paper substrates he is passionate about flexible electronics and has reason to believe that it can provide innovative solution for pervasive electronics in the coming decades he also thinks that flexible electronics can be leverage to help india in its efforts for manufacturing in india and help its journey towards self reliance in electronics over to you sundar ji we welcome you please start your talk uh, thank you dr sudhir kumar for uh, that introduction and not just that you are you are uh, you put in lot of effort in getting this together i would also like to thank elsinia for uh, in a short notice for helping us uh, gather people and get this event going and i also really thank all the panelists some of them had to wake up at unearthly hours of 2 am in the morning and uh, some of them escaped it by being in india at the right time <laughs> so but all the same um, i really thank all of you for your time ha ah jee dikhate ho na arman uska wo slide jo uska wo Yeah, I also thank uh, Maiti uh, for their constant support and encouragement, and, uh, and and that's the reason we are here, and that's the reason Flexi Center has come about. So let me right uh, dive into the actual topic: opportunities for manufacturing in India with flexible electronics. So, ah. Uh, so uh, uh, quickly to give an outline to give an idea where and what are we talking about first i just want to tell briefly the what of the whole thing um, i don't know how uh, correct it is because i am talking to the people who actually do stuff out there in the actual industry in the real world but all the same just to level set and and to uh, have a common idea i'm i'm going to just talk about what is flexible electronics and then why we should do that and then i would like to touch upon how we could go about it in india at least one of the approaches and other opportunities that are, are the flexi center set up by the meti and iit kanpur is allows and then if, uh, depending on the time some examples of new applications including some that has come from our center so first what's flexible electronics so before talking about flexible electronics it will be good to just review what is conventional electronics conventional electronics as all of you know uh, is made on single crystalline substrates uh, and uh, on the most popular substrate of course is silicon te technologies so silicon substrates and usually you make uh, you process the full wafer and you have small small areas where the circuits exist you dice them up then you actually package them into ics along with that you may include some independent components as well and together you end up putting them on a pcb printed circuit board uh, and then you assemble it and then finally you end up getting the the systems and uh, the various uh, products that you are trying to build now as far as this technology is concerned it's amazingly impressive in fact um, 
uh, it's mind boggling when one uh, realizes the power of an IBM supercomputer or, uh, or for that matter, any supercomputer. And uh, besides that, even the common man has an iPhone and its power is something that we could never have imagined even a couple of decades back. In fact, almost all the knowledge that is uh, available in most libraries is accessible to an average person thanks to the technology that is available. So that's the power of this modern electronics that is out there. Um, but that having been said, um, the, uh, its manufacturing, when, if one looks at it, can be a very complex task. It's not something that uh, you just start and do it uh, in a couple of days. It actually takes a lot of effort, a lot of know-how, and most importantly, it requires a lot of money. And a typical uh, fab would be uh, having a cost of, uh, of the order of a billion dollars, US dollars. So uh, it, it's, it's not something that anybody can just aspire for. And this indeed is a big challenge, especially in the context of India, uh, to set up some of the latest fabs. We do have some fabrication facilities, but to have state-of-the-art fab can, can be a challenge. Um, and besides that, the other aspect about uh, conventional electronics is typically it is rigid and it's solid state. Now, this actually was a wonderful thing uh, when the whole thing started because uh, unwieldy uh, vacuum tubes uh, was not something people wanted. So uh, this came as a big blessing. But over time, there are lots of applications where we would like things to be a little bit flexible, a little bit conformal and uh, certain other advantages. So making it completely solid state and rigid may not necessarily be helpful in many situations. So this is where flexible electronics comes in. So in flexible electronics, typically the whole fabrication is done with a, um, uh, by, by methods which are uh, involving many, uh, it's a roll-to-roll -roll process. And uh, it could also be a sheet to sheet process depending on how one goes about it. And, uh, use, uh, and typically you get a full roll of electronics in a very uh, short period of time, especially if you look at the, when you compare it with uh, conventional electronics, whatever electronics that you build, usually you get large volumes of it. And uh, besides that, the very fact you can make electronics on any substrate, what it means is there's a lot of scope for innovation. In fact, a uh, lot of ideas are out there. In fact, some of the pictures I show here are just ideas as of now. They may not have been completely made. But at the same time, one is working towards that. Some of them, for example, have been made and uh, of course application is something that people are exploring. This is, for example, this solar cell, which is made in Denmark. They actually have test centers where they have built these solar cells on flexible substrates. So what is the unique thing about flexible electronics? Here, you do a direct fabrication of the device on a flexible substrate. It's monolithic integration on the substrate itself. It's not that you make it and then stick it onto a substrate. So th that means that you can get really high throughputs. You can do really complex stuff. Uh, at least whatever you are able to do, those things you can do in a very integrated manner. And that leads to a lot of advantages in terms of manufacturing. And you may, uh, uh, this could be achieved not necessarily only by printing. In fact, a lot of people are also working with vacuum technologies to achieve these. And the uh, most important point that one notices in this particular technology is that it can be of a very high throughput and potentially low cost. So large area electronics where you need many square meters of electronics in a very short time. So for such applications, uh, if one can explore in flexible electronics and achieve it, certainly it's very advantageous. Now, the main point here is that uh, the performance and stability for flex in flexible electronics, however, is poor when you compare with regular electronics. Part of the reason is, of course, it has been for, uh, as electronics in the modern form, it has been ar around for a much shorter time. But besides that, there are some inherent reasons why certain things that you can achieve with conventional electronics is going to be extremely difficult or maybe even impossible with flexible electronics. But that being said, you can come up with various other applications. So uh, for those, flexible electronics will certainly be adequate and superior. And then products are not yet established. So uh, that means that this is an opportunity for everybody around the world, and especially for people, for, uh, people uh, for the industry in India, because that means that we are on a somewhat of a level playing field in this particular technology, and it's up to us to be innovative and come up with ideas. Now, the fact that it is very poor performance 
may somewhat, somewhat dissuade us, but I think it's about the appropriateness of the technology. So uh, uh, if I may quote, uh, there is a Rahim's couplet, uh, a Hindi poet, um, uh, which essentially say, uh, says that, uh, mm -hmm. kaha kare talwari. Okay, Rahiman baden dekh ke, uh, dijiye dari, sui, kaha kare talwari. For those who might not understand Hindi or Hindustani, so I, I'll just translate it. Uh, it essentially means that just looking at one parameter, don't just go with the one uh, who's having better of that particular value. On the other hand, um, uh, there are situations where a needle will be of useful or lot more use than a sword. So that means that it's the appropriateness of the technology. And there are many situations where low cost, flexible electronics might be much better and maybe we should leverage it. So I think that's the whole idea. So flexible substrate, the beauty is you can pretty much make the device on any substrate that you can think of. You can talk plastic, paper, textiles, steel, very popular uh, uh, substrate, especially in malls and other places for making sensors and displays and so on. Corrugated steel sheets may be very relevant for India where a lot of places construction and roof, roofing is made with these. So maybe the inside could have oil EVs in the future or we don't know. Maybe if you are able to build those, that can, it has a lot of potential. So clearly flexible electronics you can build in pretty much any substrate. But that having been said, since it's a new technology, it's not something that we can get the best right away. Uh, so maybe there, one can always look at a hybrid technology as well. That can be a bridging. So in the hybrid technology, what one can do is certain parts, some of the best we can take from conventional electronics and deploy it in the flexible substrate. And uh, for example, here you have a patch where maybe the chip could be a very advanced chip, which is actually for biomedical purposes. An antenna could be printed and the other parts could be uh, from conventional technology or for display, certain parts could be flexible. So what it essentially means is you can use hybrid, which can bridge between the two technologies. So you can get the best of both worlds, at least as of now. And, if you, and certainly it will be a good interim solution, even if everything doesn't become flexible and all the advantages we expect from flexible is not immediately available. So having given a brief background, let us see why we should go for flexible electronics. The uh, typically, usually there may be inevitable reasons. Certain things can only be achieved by flexible electronics, but there could also be certain cases where uh, it can be do certain, some aspects of the of functions better than uh, existing technology. Maybe at the least it can, it can be of a very low cost. So maybe uh, in some places that may be the best thing. So let's quickly look at some of the reasons. Uh, I'm not going to the full exhaustive reason, but I think some of the reasons to give a flavor. So first of all, the beauty of flexible electronics is typically when you make it on a substrate, you are, it's likely to be bend, flexible, bendable, and conforming. And these can lead to a lot of applications. Whole Center, for example, has built these flexible displays. Uh, a German company has built uh, electronics on, uh, on this. And here is an example of a patch. Uh, there is a Com a company in Massachusetts, uh, which has actually built uh, electronics, which is actually collecting information in real time. Uh, uh, and you can see that the wrinkle in the skin is not affecting it at all. And it's actually just almost as it's part of the skin and doesn't interfere for the person who's uh, wearing that patch. There are lots of cases where you need lightweight electronics. Um, in fact, uh, um, Although there may be other solutions that may be available right now, but people are constantly looking for ways to reduce the weight. For example, in a satellite, every uh, milligram or every gram that you are able to reduce will give rise to a lot of benefit in the long run for the launch as well as maintenance of the satellite. And similarly for applications which can be for unmanned vehicles, uh, unmanned uh, aircrafts, so if we want to run it by solar, clearly uh, lightweight solar would be much more advantageous because the fuel requirement and very, uh, uh, will certainly be there. So if you can achieve reasonably good efficiency, lightweight, flexible electronics may be a better choice in, in these situations. Um, uh, perhaps this is one of the most important reasons, that is high throughput and large volume that you can achieve with flexible electronics. Now, uh, the image itself tells you, if you can get this even a few meters per, in a minute, you can imagine the number, amount of area that you can cover with uh, electronics. This particular thing is a solar panel that's being built. So, but typically these manufacturing methods can be sheet to sheet. 
which tend to be a little slower, but still you can automate to some extent. But road to road to roll really can be fast, and the road to roll technology actually directly borrows from the traditional printing technology. And uh, if you look at it, uh, printing technologies can be extremely fast. They can go to several uh, meters, or if sometimes even tens of meters per second. So that means that uh, in a very short time, within uh, a minute, you have more than half a kilometer of uh, electronics available. So depending on the width, if you take one meter long, you are actually having a lot of electronics available in a very short time. So that means, uh, as a rule of thumb, um, of course, these, there, are, there are lots of variables out here. One can see that what you can manufacture in one year with conventional electronics in terms of the area or the volume of tech that you manufacture, you can do that similar thing in almost a week. Of course, one will say that what, that what you're manufacturing is completely different. You're not comparing apples to apples. I do agree with that. But many times when you, do, when you need an orange, you don't want to go for an apple. So maybe wherever you can achieve, whatever you can achieve in large volumes and printable electronics, I think you should go ahead and do that. And here is a quick summary. Of course, this is the, bot the bottom, bottom line is the most important thing when it comes to industry. Um, we find that almost in every parameter, uh, uh, flexible electronics has an advantage. You need, you need plastics and others which are low cost. Processing, many times metallurgical grade is sufficient. Uh, uh, purity is sufficient, but of course electronic grade many times will be needed as well. Processing equipments often are simpler and number of steps is much less. Uh, this is an important point. The pattern that you make in conventional technology, you usually deposit and then follow it up with uh, lithography and then you etch it. So you deposit and then remove. So the whole process inherently is wasteful. On the other hand, in flexible technology, in processes such as printing, you directly put in the pattern. That means that you are not wasting your, any material. So in a way, this can actually be environment friendly as well, as well as saving material and reducing cost. The fab cost, Clearly, we have a, several orders of magnitude difference that you get. And uh, of course, throughput I just discussed. But of course, the last line is also extremely important. You may do a lot of it, but if it is of no, no good, nobody is going to buy it. So that part is clear, and we, I fully acknowledge that. But there are areas where clearly flexible electronics can be deployed even as we speak today. Eight minutes to go, Professor Sundar. How many minutes? Eight minutes. Eight minutes up. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Uh, so uh, the, the uh, your quick uh, view of a sna uh, snapshot of the market for flexible electronics. Uh, these are some predictions, sometimes an assessment. Uh, now, what you call as flexible electronics may be varying depending on who is doing the survey. So, ID Tech report. If you look at it, as of as we speak, we have forty one billion US dollars, which uh, people in the know are telling me uh, that. Uh, this is pretty good for a startup uh, or for a uh, technology that is just starting off. So in that sense, uh, this is certainly a lucrative market for one billion around the world. Uh, and the projections are it's supposed to go to around 70 billion as per this particular survey. I do believe that if there can be very good breakthroughs in terms of applications, clearly these numbers will uh, can even change by orders of magnitude. Uh, there, there was another uh, re uh, review that we got hold of. This was in India, and the, uh, the, 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 one of the key points that got, they, of course, estimated it as 28 billion as of now. As I said, depending on what industry are including flexible and what is hybrid and so on. But uh, their assessment is India's uh, contribution as of now for this flexible electronics market is just around 1%. So that means that there's a huge opportunity I think this is a great opportunity for us to really uh, pull up our socks and get something going. And uh, th this is what I, th I hope we can do. Now the question is, how do we get started? Uh, uh, this is where uh, we have been really lucky that the government has been proactive. Um, and uh, some of my colleagues they took a lot of initiative uh, at IIT Kanpur. And uh, we, have got, we have a wonderful National Center for Flexible Electronics. Um, and uh, this has been set up by both Government of India, Ministry of uh, I, uh, Electronics and I, Information Technology, as well as IIT Kanpur. Both have been very generous and we thank them for that. Uh, and the whole idea is to promote flexible electronic technology. Now, as of today, we have about 100 professionals, technical experts from many from around the world, international experience and industry experience. And uh, we are, uh, as we speak, involved and working on various aspects of flexible technology. 
the another important point is excellent facilities have been created we right now have 5000 square meter of lab facilities of which um, um, around uh, some, more than 150 square meters is clean room and then we have state of the art printing facilities in fact it's custom made and i i hope to show a video graph shortly the characterization and lab facilities are also available and not just that we are based in ecosystem of iit kanpur and uh, there are lots of supporting labs that are involved so we, we a lot of facilities are available here for uh, anal uh, development and research as well as sometimes for production now um, we have a clear industry focus our focus is not plain uh, to do vanilla research or blue sky research uh, although some of that may have may be happening in institute and in associated centers but our main goal is to work with the industry as we speak now we have what uh, 10 project partners we our membership uh, of industries is around 20 20 industries are members of our center and we have ndas with about 100 so we are talking to about 100 ndas in fact some of our project partners are also part of the panel and uh, maybe they can share some of their experiences on this now the purpose of this whole thing is technology development and solutions we want to be a world class center we are working towards that certain aspects we feel are already world class that's our opinion but of course uh, we have to uh, work work a lot and do a, we are working towards that and the second thing is we want to give as much support as possible for indian industries to actually make in india as much as possible uh we uh, uh, this is a view of the various equipment that is there we have lab scale where a lot of research happens prototyping is possible besides that we have an industry level uh, 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 uh industry scale uh, thing also so let me see oh i have to go out of this pointer arrow point okay it's not allowing me to start the video how do i come out of it visible yeah i think that's better is it visible yeah that's for centering as you can see there are reams of uh, electronics that's coming out okay so we move on uh, so uh, how how can one work with the industry uh, from uh, or how are we work, trying to work with the industry and we welcome whichever whatever support and guidance the industry can give us first of course we would request industry to uh, uh, become a partner uh, that that will help us also to learn what is needed for the industry and industry could also see what's happening in flexible electronics um, through our eyes uh, then technology transfer is another thing that we are working on many uh, technologies that have been developed we are trying to see if we can share it to the industry and uh, besides that we are also working with industry on joint development many projects are underway as we speak and uh, we, we also are um, open to product manufacturing especially the initial stage stage some of our startups are already using it but we are we are open to work with somebody who wants to use the uh, facilities that are there for a very short time so with that i'll come to uh, sudhir how much time is there two minutes oh, okay so then applications there are various applications i'll quickly zip through this of that i want to focus only on healthcare and packaging and labels there are various other applications uh, sectors that are there so healthcare sector uh, as you can see uh, the patches that are there these are actual products that are that are out there in the market people are also trying to see uh, the cardiac signal recorder we have uh, transistors as well as uh, photovoltaics being very flexible uh, there are also futuristic technology where you want to implant something under the skin and using laser to power it so especially for heart implants and all that this would be extremely useful there is a plethora of healthcare applications out there when one does the search it's quite easy to get a lot of ideas in that but what's happening in our center we have we have some really creative people uh, who have been working over the years and we have been lucky to be able to assemble some of those ideas so uh, here we have uh, thermometers uh, where actually it's a patch 
and this can be printed and uh, one, the patch is worn, the patient will not be have to be disturbed in order to take uh, measurement of temperature. Uh, especially when uh, this is the most reliable one that many doctors in India certainly uh, would prefer. So uh, for this type of measurement, uh, the patient can be sleeping and can just use a probe external reader and measure it. But the sensors and other things are printed. Uh, we, we have deployed this in our center uh, uh, with some thermal uh, imaging. So uh, we, can, we are able to see the temperature of, uh, of the various people who are walking to our gates. So here also we have um, uh, heaters. So this also there's a video, but I'll skip it for the moment because of time. But uh, sorry, this is not a heater. This is a heater is coming next. It looks like a heater. This is actually uh, uh, for measuring the level in a IV fluid uh, dispenser in the hospital. So we, it's a very simple, nice concept where a capac capacitance is used to measure the level of the liquid, and uh, they are actually uh, uh, actually able to send a signal to the nurse as soon as the level changes. So these are being printed out here and we have some prototypes developed. Uh, there, there's a pressure sensor that has been developed. Can we put in shoes and measure, map out how people are walking and their gait can be measured. Flexible heater. Uh, so this actually, the heaters can be printed in, uh, and uh, as a result, the cost can be low. And not just that, you can use a cell phone, uh, iPhone to be able to run it. We have deployed it with our security in our institute. Uh, uh, so the, there are, there's a whole range of act, uh, things that can be done in healthcare. Then quickly, a little bit on packaging. Uh, India has a very important player in packaging. In fact, a huge market exists here. And not just that, a huge uh, industry uh, caters to the world market. So 32 billion is the size of this market. Uh, and a lot of applications are there. In fact, some of our partners who are going to be discussing today, they are also involved in this uh, these, uh, type of work. So uh, you have smart packaging, uh, uh, interactive packaging, and also, for example, for medical purposes, it, it, it tracks whether somebody has taken the pill or not. So uh, that, that way, uh, a lot of smart uh, uh, smartness is built into the in regular day-to-day -day activities. Uh, within our center, we have actually a printed label that has been built, uh, and this was uh, work, uh, work, work done along with the industry. And uh, the whole idea is, is that uh, it should not, one should not be able to uh, make a counterfeit of this. And uh, this was uh, successfully transferred to the company. Of course, it's up to the company now to deploy it. Um, we have, uh, this is probably the jewel in our crown. We have a, smart, a startup uh, which is anti-counterfeiting and especially it started off with a goal on some of some uniquely Indian problems of counterfeit that, uh, that one encounters. And uh, in fact, India exports a large volume of medicine to various uh, countries, especially the third world countries. And uh, it turns out that there are counterfeit that are coming in there. So in order to track that and at very low cost, this has to be achieved. And uh, this company is now uh, working with, on various products to deploy this. So although it was made with some originally with some purposes, but it is finding a lot of leverage in various places. And uh, the beauty is that it's very difficult to replicate. Of course, that's one of the requirements of counterfeiting and a lot of technologies exist out there, but this also certainly doing quite well. So uh, finally, uh, this is what I would like to end my uh, press brief presentation. Let us find a relevant application. And I would request the industry, especially uh, around the world, of course, and certainly those who are focused on manufacturing in India. Uh, I think there are opportunities that are out there and uh, we'll welcome you to uh, send ideas so that we can work, see whether something can be worked out. And uh, our CEO, Dr. Sudhir Kumar, is always there and he's very energetic and dynamic. And I'm sure he will give whatever support that is there. And our whole team that is there will provide whatever support that is. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ayer. I deeply appreciate the wonderful presentation you have made at this meeting. There's few questions, but we are, we are running late by a few minutes, four minutes. So we will take the question at the end of the session. At, at the sure. end of the session. Okay. So if you, can you please start? Let me, yeah. Just stop sharing. Yeah. So, so now uh, we are moving to the session two. We start the second session, which is focused on the topic potential and future of printable electronics. We have five esteemed panelists with us to discuss and provide their views on the topic. 
Mr. Bruno Sarmaji, past president, Elsina and managing director, Deke Electronics. Mr. Ravi M. Vatkal, managing director, McDermott Alpha Solution. Mr. S Dr. Suraj Rangrajan, director and in India, CTU Applied Materials India. Mr. Paul Smith, VP and general manager, Comet Technology, INC US. And uh, Dr. Ram Prashad Gandhi Ravan, co founder and CEO, Space Foundry, INC USA. We are privileged to have such a wonderful panel today to have their thoughts, vision, and recommendation on such an important topic, covering full value chain from technology development to delivering useful solution to the market and society. So uh, let me switch on my video also. Dear panelists, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you all to this important panel discussion. I would introduce the panelists briefly as I invite them to speak. Just an information, we would be having approximately eight to 10 minutes to each panelist to present and share their views, uh, followed by a Q&A session of approximately 10 minutes time, okay? With this, just, yeah. With this, uh, I would like to invite first Mr. Binoz Sarmaji. Mr. Sharma does not need any introduction, but I would like to say a few words about him. Mr. Binoz Sharma is the managing director of uh, Deke Electronics Limited, Noida, a leader in manufacturing of plastic film capacitor. Mr. Sharma is a dynamic business leader and believes in empowering people to achieve the goals of his organization. Deke Electronics is a toss bearer uh, among medium-sized enterprises and has achieved extraordinary success in establishing world-class quality standards and environment-friendly production processes. Apart from providing the leadership to the organization, Mr. Sharma is also a trainer of international stand, standing and is on the panel of CVI Netherlands, an organization which promotes exports of the products from developing countries to Europe. He has uh, conducted training programs all over the world, including countries in Africa, Central America, and Asia. Indeed, Mr. Sarma has been contributing to the development of the business community at large and transfer his skill for the benefit of others. Vinoshi, I have, I want to start with a basically question with you and then you can give your uh, thoughts, views, and you can share so that uh, the whole audience is benefited. I would request you to have your views on the current status of the electronic sector, including domestic and electronic manufacturing, the potential and future of emerging technology in like printing electronics. Over to you, Vinod Sarvati. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sudhir Kumar. Um, also, uh, Professor Iyer, it was a pleasure to hear from you. And I think you've covered a lot of topics that will be extremely interesting to all our audience members. Uh, Sudhirji, if you look at the electronics uh, sector in India, the industry, in fact, I've stopped calling it the electronics sector anymore. I think it's a mistake that everybody, in, uh, you know, my colleagues in the government and the industry made for too long, where we treated electronics as a sector or as a vertical. And which is why what happened is 30 years ago when we were we were making a lot of electronics or assembling a lot of electronics in India, including a lot of components at that point of time, because we looked at it as a vertical, in my opinion, we made a mistake as, as everybody knows of signing up an ITA one agreement too early, uh, not realizing that this will render almost most building blocks of electronics, not only uh, at that point of time, but even for the future at zero duty, which meant that we will not be able to be globally competitive. Uh, as I wrote in a piece long back uh, that I've written, when will Africa make their first light bulb? And my argument was that economies need to adopt manufacturing and industrialization in phases. And if they rush that too much, uh, then you are rendered fairly globally incompetitive, which is unfortunately, as we know, and I won't go into the history, over three decades, we eroded our manufacturing and value add, especially in this sector, and became largely traders, if I may loosely call it that. Having said that, I think the government, uh, and to some extent we can take some minor credit from the industry that some of us survived and managed to keep the pressure on with the government and told them that this is not a vertical that we can afford to be non-competitive. It is not just another sector and you can say, oh, if we can't make this, we can import it. This is an enabler. It's a horizontal. It's a meta resource. It will enable every other industry and not just industry and economics. It will enable our lives and livelihoods both as we have now discovered and many examples of that are possible. So it's not something that you can ignore and say, oh, this we can continue to import. 1.4 billion people cannot be importing electronics. 
we don't have the foreign exchange for it we we cannot uh, forego the opportunity that manufacturing 400 billion dollars plus of electronics brings to this country and i think we now now i'll come to the positive part of it that after three decades of struggle and people realizing that we had made some mistakes a lot of corrections are being done and hats off to the government of the day uh, the policy makers especially meti i would say uh, hats off to the business support organizations like elsina that we kept this pressure on we have come to a day today i think which is extremely exciting there is not a single facet of electronics that we don't have a policy in place for including semiconductors which is a very difficult one as we know and i'm very glad that a very positive discussion has started two weeks ago you must have seen there was an expression of interest in this very difficult area of semiconductors and i hope and wish that uh, we will have not just one fab but a, at least a couple of fabs of all types not just because fabs are uh, sort of a uh, you know uh, a declaration of us being there but i think because it's strategically very important for what we are trying to do now, having said that let me quickly switch so to everybody in the audience my message is this if there is one sector we have grown at about 25% cagr for the last 6 7 years this growth rate is only going to accelerate because our demand is accelerating the world and we know the china de-risking strategies and for several geopolitical reasons i think the decade for indian electronics manufacturing has arrived as we step into 2021 in a, in a week's time this is really the decade that we were waiting for in my personal opinion it's come 10 years too late uh, we are all 10 years older than we should have been uh, but it's never too late to make a great beginning as they say so now when we step on that i think there are a few mistakes we've been making even in the industry and what you are doing in this fantastic center of excellence of yours steps in that direction and i'll quickly take 2 minutes 3 minutes to say that for too long we have fought what i would call a cost competitive world we are trying to make what everybody else makes exactly how everybody else makes it and then we discovered that oh we are not cost competitive now that's not the way i think that that's not the road we should take first of all there are many new sectors many new sub sectors applications and solutions that are coming up the need for a video conferencing call like this is just a few months old or let's say a year old now and we have seen how so many people are able to make it the need for embedded electronics is coming the need to marry hardware and software is uh, is, is is there and and we use it all the time similarly the need for flexible electronics because the applications demand it today in some cases as you mentioned professor ayer also whether it's uh, wearables and uh, you know those examples are those medical electronics embedded electronics uh, all that is well known and i will not go into that because i think the other panelists are far more qualified to talk about that so i will leave it to them however the one message i want to give is don't think that this is only a big boys game that it is only for semiconductors it's for large sensor players as a very medium scale company i firmly believe and we've done a joint venture with a british company and that's how i came in touch with your center and with uh, the dynamic leadership of dr sudeep kumar at that stage very very pleased to see what you're doing there so we are looking at a uh, flexible solar uh, pv uh, printing uh, you know in in a collaboration and in a close collaboration with the center uh, with this collaboration also with our uh, technical partners or i would say our collaborators in as power roll in uk but we also looking at nano grooves and can we print capacitive ink into that and what that gives us is that so you have capacitors now in layers you can have it them as ribbons you can have them as tapes uh, you can also print them onto other circuits as as i'm sure some of you will speak but most importantly the kind of uh, the capacitance that we are able to put into those nano grooves thanks to printable flexible technologies and and uh, and fortunately all that equipment is available with the center so we don't have to invest in that very heavy equipment uh, at least till the stage of bringing it to uh, to a pilot stage to testing to bringing it to market for the first few pilots uh, we i'm so glad that at iit kanpur and at your center that this facility is available to us so i feel that flexible storage of electronics uh, of electricity can now be done on a film and this is a medium scale company talking without having some great r&d budgets so my message to the audience uh, is that this doesn't have to be rocket science everything that we can think of in electronics a lot of it that can be done not necessarily everything can be done in flexible electronics but there is a room for us to start rethinking what your example of counterfeit i think is a fantastic example we are now looking at asset tracking we are looking at uh, you know uh, 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 anti theft uh, or preventions uh, you can look at several examples of sensors so small tags a lot of stuff antenna printable antenna which is used everywhere now 
So the I think the number of examples are tremendously high. I would urge everybody and every discussion should get us some action points. Otherwise, only a deliberation discussion. To the audience, I would really strongly recommend take a trip down to IIT Kanpur, look at the center, and your eyes will not only open up, your minds will open up to the kind of opportunities that we all have. With that, I will close. I know that there are other panelists who have much more valuable lessons to give us. So oh, no, I will thank, stop here. Thank you, Vinodji. Thank you, Vinodji, for encouraging insights. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Ravi Vatkal to share his views on the topic. Uh, just a brief introduction of Ravi. Mr. Ravi uh, Vatkal serves as a Managing Director, India for Magdermic Alpha Electronic Solution, which includes the Alpha Assembly Solution, Magdermic and Thonic businesses. Ravi currently serves as a member of the Global Board of Directors of INEMI, -E the Global Electronics Industry Consortium with cumulative, mem num cumulative member revenues in excess of $750 billion and serves on the Industrial Advisory Board of the Renaissance Polytechnic Institute Lighting Enabled System and Application Research Center. Ravi earned a PhD in Material Science and Engineering and MBA and MS in Material Science and Engineering from uh, Vanderbilt University. Over to you, Ravi. Oh, thank you, Sudhir. I appreciate it. I'm just going to, um, first of all, thank you, Vinod, for a fantastic uh, uh, introduction and so energizing. So uh, thanks again. Um, I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, <clears throat> can you all see this? Yeah, Ravi, go ahead. So I thought I'd just give a quick uh, um, introduction on who we are and uh, what we're doing in this particular space. So um, we, our parent company is called Element Solutions Incorporated. We're a $1.8 billion company operating in about 50 countries worldwide, uh, over 4,400 employees. Uh, we are publicly held uh, on the New York Stock, Stock Exchange. Um, we have four uh, major verticals, um, electronics, uh, electronic materials and, and specialty chemicals is one. Um, industrial solutions, which includes uh, electroplating chemistries as well as uh, uh, films, industrial films and, uh, and film insert molding films. And then graphics, which uh, includes polymer based chemistries to create uh, plates and sheets for printing uh, high quality packaging. And the last uh, vertical is offshore solutions where we make uh, hydraulic fluids for offshore oil drilling. So it's, it's fairly diverse uh, holding. Um, uh, but cutting across uh, three of the four verticals is um, our focus on both electronics and printing in particular. So uh, our electronics group really goes from chip to box, uh, anywhere where an electron goes or heat goes, we make those materials. Um, our uh, industrial solutions business actually makes the uh, PET and uh, polycarbonate strips both for um, membrane touch switch, you know, the industrial uh, uh, film business where <clears throat> electronics can be integrated for touch, uh, as well as insert molding products for um, for FIM applications, uh, predominantly currently for automotive. Um, and then our graphics business makes uh, flexo plate materials in sheet and liquid form, as well as screen printing chemicals for uh, for graphics industry which includes packaging. Um, on the electronic side, as I mentioned, we go from chip to box. So we uh, actually were the first um, to develop and commercialize uh, copper damascene chemistry uh, for back end of line semiconductor. That was in the mid, mid to late 90s. And um, since then, uh, it, 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 you know, the semiconductor technology group has grown tremendously. Um, we do everything from uh, back end of line semiconductor, the uh, bumping redistribution layers, as well as the uh, packaging materials, uh, die attach, and so on and so forth. We also make um, uh, the uh, stencil based uh, technology that's used in uh, computer graphics. The um, circuitry solutions is in uh, uh, both substrate and PCB fabrication and assembly solutions makes materials for a PCB assembly. 
Uh, so we basically cover uh, essentially the whole value chain here. Uh, Location-wise, we're in 50 countries globally. Um, this is just the electronics, but overall as a company, we're in about 50 countries with multiple locations for R&D applications, manufacturing and, uh, and development. Uh, in India, we are headquartered in Chennai. We have a manufacturing uh, as well as technical center in Chennai. Uh, we have a global R&D and technical center in Bangalore, and then a technical test center in uh, Manasar uh, in uh, Goldtown area in, in North India. We've been in India for about uh, 89 years now. Um, so it's a long time um, and, and it was set up as a multinational in 1931. <clears throat> and uh, some sometime along the way we uh, started helping out the electronics industry and we sort of grew with it. Uh, and now we are um, working on all of our, all of our uh, business platforms here in India. So I, I just thought I'd give a quick uh, download of at least our view of how we see this, uh, this area of flexible and uh, printable slash printed electronics. So we put this in four buckets um, within our company. The first one, of course, uh, is as, as uh, Dr. Ayer mentioned, um, is flexible hybrid electronics. This is the uh, flex circuit um, applications that are used in um, you know, consumer electronics, uh, as well as you know, several other applications, uh, your smartphone, your um, tablets, your laptops, et cetera, they all contain flexible um, print circuit boards and, and uh, uh, components, traditional components get integrated onto, onto those flexible circuits. Um, and the, uh, the substrates in that case, uh, predominantly are polyamide. There's also some PET substrates that are uh, being used. Um, the second major application is what I would call uh, in printed electronics. Uh, these would be applications such as membrane touch switches, um, where you have a predominantly a PET substrate. There's no real stretching or forming going on, but it is flexible, bendable, um, and printable. And you can create a whole additive uh, circuit um, on, on this layer. And obviously this can be sheet to sheet or roll to roll application. Uh, the third uh, major application is uh, in mold electronics, um, which essentially involves um, one time thermoforming of substrates uh, like polycarbonate in particular. It also does include some PET, but it's predominantly polycarbonate substrates that are now used. And these are um, actually quite significantly used in, in the automotive sector in particular. And we pioneered the space um, about 15 to 17 years ago. We've been in the space for a long time. Uh, and the same goes for uh, the the substrates for the printed electronics piece, uh, we make those as well. Um, in the case of uh, stretchable electronics, which is a fourth category, <coughs> these undergo multiple stretching events. These are the um, circuits that would be printed on uh, fabrics in particular that are worn or, or um, you know, substrates that are inherently stretchable. And, and in that case, the substrates typically tend to be either silicone or um, thermoplastic polyurethanes. Um, we typically play in the first three um, circles here uh, in terms of flexible hybrid electronics where we make both, you know, all of the interconnect materials, including the uh, circuitry that makes up the flex circuit as well as the assembly materials or the uh, chip attached materials and encapsulant materials that are used to um, assemble the circuits, um, the printed electronics and the in-mold uh, electronics. Uh, we have um, some activity in the stretchable segment, but we're not um, really focused on that at the current moment. Um, so what are the opportunities um, for India? Again, from our perspective, you, you heard um, both um, Dr. Ayer and Vinod um, speak about the opportunities in India, and I couldn't agree more that uh, you know, this is really more about uh, uh, creating a, a new set of applications and, and, and entering new market spaces, uh, which are, uh, uh, you know, blue ocean type applications where we can blaze some pathways. The applications, um, and I've sort of arranged them 
in such a way that uh, you, you basically look at what could penetrate the fastest uh, initially and what could come later. Um, I believe that the flexible hybrid electronics, which utilizes uh, the flex circuit substrates, um, which are then circuitized uh, using um, chemistry, uh, and then components are assembled using traditional um, existing SMT infrastructure. Those have the a fastest uh, pathway into the marketplace, predominantly because there are substantial investments already happening uh, in the space and, and this will come. Uh, it is coming already, it has come, and it will simply scale over time because the infrastructure already does exist to, to uh, scale this segment. Um, the second major segment is uh, in-mold electronics, uh, which is formable and injection moldable. Um, here um, in India, the ecosystem and infrastructure really needs to be built. Uh, there, uh, there is activity in the space, but um, it's quite small at the moment and it can scale substantially uh, going forward. Uh, there is definitely significant scope here, uh, given um, the significant uh, presence of the automotive industry in particular in, in, in this country. And I think this will, will take off over time. Uh, the third is the large area printed electronics, including membrane switches. Uh, here, again, the infrastructure is present, but it needs to be expanded and scaled um, in, in a significant way. Smart packaging, um, that is electronically capable labels. You heard uh, from uh, Dr. Ayer on this. Um, we can leverage existing graphics and packaging infrastructure. Um, that exists in spades in the country, and, and this is a big country for FMCG products. And so I don't see any reason why you know, the industry cannot take uh, advantage of the infrastructure that exists and build on top of that um, by, you know, really understanding the needs and, and uh, pull through applications, um, you know, the anti-counterfeit being one key uh, application in that whole segment. Um, but several other things could emerge there as well. And then, of course, uh, the stretchable electronics where fabrics um, as substrates uh, India is very big in textile technology. This is, uh, while a significant amount of work is has been done in this space, um, this really needs to evolve on a full basis. In other words, you really need a, a set of applications that create some critical mass in the space to, to move this forward. Uh, but clearly, the, there is capability um, available here to be able to penetrate this. So um, what will drive growth in India in each of these segments? So as I said, flexible hybrid electronics is already commercial. It's a near-term opportunity and this can scale very rapidly here. The in-mold electronics, uh, it, you know, use cases with ROI, localized uh, materials availability and infrastructure build out is gonna drive penetration here. The large area printed electronics, um, the MTS is already commercial in India. Um, it needs to scale and, and that requires a, a more systematic uh, market development initiative here. Smart packaging, I think, uh, is an emerging market space. Again, if there's use cases with ROI and this is picked up with uh, you know people, companies that have scale in this sector, the FMCG sector in particular and the packaging sector, then the localization of materials and infrastructure scaling will really drive penetration in India because this, you know, many of these spaces are driven uh, through people and uh, it scales uh, literally by the number of people that are, uh, that will be consuming this technology. And the last one is the stretchable uh, electronics. Again, I believe that uh, sufficient number of use cases will be required to create that market pull and, and ROI and uh, uh, with local materials availability, it will drive penetration in India. Um, so we've, you know, we have a significant uh, presence and capability globally in, in these uh, spaces and sectors. Um, we'd be happy to work with uh, anyone who would be interested in, in working with us in these segments um, and uh, you know, look forward to partnering with uh, 
uh, companies as well as uh, IIT Kanpur in India uh, in, in, in this sector. Um, we, because we have a substantial amount of um, scale and technology base globally, uh, if we identify uh, applications in, and uh, the need uh, on a local level, then we can pretty much bring any technology here and localize it, um, which is not an issue for us. So uh, with that said, uh, I think I will close here. And uh, once everybody is done, be happy to take questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Raviji, for sharing the in-depth insights and growth prospects in detail involved in printable electronics. Very interesting. And uh, definitely, I have some question. I'll come back later because we are running behind the time. And we have a lot of scope uh, to collaborate uh, mutually in, in, in the field which we have explained. Now, uh, I, I, I invite Dr. Suraj Rangarajan to present and share his views on the topic. Just to give a brief introduction of Surat. Uh, Dr. Surat Nagrajan is the India CTO based out of Applied Materials, Bangalore, India. He started his career at Applied Materials Santa Clara in 1997, where he held different roles ranging from process engineering, technology, program management, and product marketing for thinking deposition and metallization for interconnection site and novel uh, memories. He moved to India in 2007 to set up the solar group for applied materials in India. Later, he, he headed the engineering group for dielectric uh, deposition. Over to you, Suresh. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Sudhir. Thanks, Elsina. And uh, thanks to all the other panelists. And thanks, uh, Dr. Sundar, for setting up a good context for this meeting. Uh, as you may have heard, uh, there is a lot of convergence in thoughts already. Uh, a lot of the people have uh, said almost the same thing. They've talked about the opportunity. They talked about ROI. And there are some keywords that you start emerging. Uh, hybrid electronics, uh, some semiconductor components that are already being done, and things like that. Uh, so what I'll try to do in the next few minutes is set the stage on who we are, what we do, what we play, what role we play in this ecosystem, and then hand it to the other panelists to continue this discussion. Um, so uh, applied materials is, uh, uh, I, all of you will know applied materials as a semiconductor and display equipment manufacturer. Uh, we are uh, one of the biggest uh, equipment companies today. We uh, brought in about uh, $17 billion in revenue in the year just completed. And just for context, uh, people were talking about the industry itself. The electronics industry is about 1.3, 1.4 trillion. And the semiconductor industry is now getting close to about 500 billion. And that gives context to the numbers that Sundar talked about earlier on the flexible part of it. And I think there's always different ways of counting where display stands in that. Um, we are a very R&D intensive company. Uh, um, we put in about $2 billion in R&D every year. Um, and in India, we have close to about 4,000 employees, mainly based in uh, Bangalore. That's our office in uh, uh, ITPL in Whitefield. And we do also have some presence in uh, Chennai and in uh, Mumbai, uh, where we do a lot of uh, engineering and also materials R&D. Uh, so this is uh, aside from our semiconductor and display capability. Here is what we bring to the roll-to-roll -roll, uh, uh, arena. Um, the TopMet, the thermal evaporation tool, is something that is very familiar to the India market. This is something that we have been selling uh, through uh, applied films, which we acquired in 2007 for more than, uh, I think, 30, 40 years. Uh, there are, I think, about 40, 50 of these based uh, in India, which serve the food packaging industry globally. And this is one area that will continue, and we do see uh, more innovations coming in here as we try to increase the performance of some of these films. And then there are different varieties of these with uh, different ways of depositing uh, material, e-beam, 
evaporation, sputtering, TV, CVD, and also the inductive coil to be able to uh, make uh, different kinds of uh, material uh, depositions on these uh, films. Um, let me go to the next slide. Um, so different uh, panelists so far have touched on all these areas. The food packaging one is something that exists today and you will see a lot more innovations in this uh, uh, as different requirements come in. Uh, uh, and I think there are also some regulations that govern this. And as we go to single use plastics and many things, you will see this area continue to evolve. The touch market is something that uh, is, uh, is a big market as more and more of these uh, uh, devices get manufactured and you start getting these uh, uh, small screen Apple Watch type displays. This is something that uh, we do uh, serve and we see this market also continue to grow. Uh, the security and decorative market is something that India has not yet adopted. This is there in uh, uh, Europe and other countries. Uh, and these are slightly more expensive and maybe for the high end of the market, you can see these uh, starting to come in maybe uh, the uh, counterfeiting of uh, high end products uh, and to make uh, to protect them. Uh, the window film application is something that also is taking a little bit of traction in some areas. Again, as people pointed out, this is also based on a ROI perspective uh, at some point uh, based on the cost and applications, these will start getting some traction. Um, flexible displays, I think these were about the same pictures that Sundar also showed in the beginning. A lot of these are conceptual as now, but you are seeing some of these starting to come in uh, maybe over the next uh, few years, uh, you will see a lot more of these. Uh, this is one area where we definitely can do a lot more, uh, the RFID tags. Uh, uh, how can we use these, uh, especially now when you do not want touch, uh, how can you use non-touch applications um, and uh, everything, even including your uh, credit card and things like that. How can you avoid touch? There could be ways to integrate more of these, uh, integrate more of these. Uh, and then a um, lot of people talked about packaging. Uh, this is one area where definitely we can do a lot more in terms of adding intelligence to our packaging. How do we bring in uh, different uh, sensors, integrate them into the packaging. If you bring down the cost, then we can uh, make spoilage sensors and other sensors integrated into our uh, packaging. So just what will all this take, right? Uh, and I'm this presentation, or at least this slide is more from a equipment provider perspective, right? What exists today to serve these applications. So mostly uh, from a roll-to-roll -roll perspective on flexible substrates, today we can do uh, vacuum deposition easily. These are our lace potato chips packets, uh, blanket films are done. Uh, we can do a lot more as we integrate new kinds of films, uh, new barrier coatings and optical coatings to serve different applications. The next step would be how you incorporate some amount of patterning and into this uh, contact patterning or some amount of etching and printing. And I think Sundar had a video where uh, there is a capability already in the uh, Kanpur line uh, to be able to do this. With that, you can now bring in some functionality into the, uh, the products that we make. And here again, I think everybody, almost all presentations that you see, there is always now uh, the capability exists. We are looking for applications. What are the killer apps that will make use of these applications? Uh, what are those uh, IoT sensors? What are those uh, food sensors, health sensors, which you can make at scale? That, that's the other question. Um, how can you make this at a scale where this starts 
making the ROI for uh, the uh, the company is required. And that that is something that we probably need to work together to figure out in an India ecosystem, which are these drivers, application drivers that make sense where the industry sees the ROI and the technology already exists. I think that that's the sort of magic spot which will drive this, where the technology exists today and there is an application that can give reasonable ROI with today's technology. And of course, as you go into the future and we bring in more patterning and uh, uh, we can make more complex devices, we can improve the electronics and the semiconductor performance of these and do more. But I think that probably is not something that we want to target. What I would like to see is how can we make this happen with the with the capabilities that we have today, how can we build devices that and for applications that can demonstrate ROI today for the India ecosystem? To me, that should be the focus of what the Flexi Center it, uh, at IIT Kanpur can help connect the dots between the industry that's looking for applications and the solution providers who have who bring in these capabilities, both equipment, materials, and technology. Uh, this is a, sort of an extension of the hybrid argument in terms of, um, I think Sundar had shown this whole layout of conventional uh, semiconductor and uh, flexible semiconductor, uh, for flexible electronics. So um, the processes in the middle are probably the ones that are the ones where uh, we will need to continue to make work in the flexible electronic space, the PVD, CVD, and uh, other uh, deposition, etch, and lithography are well established for rigid substrates. And the other advantage of the rigid substrate is the ability of silicon to handle higher temperatures, plasma, and other processes. The flexible substrates that we are trying to use today have limitations. So which means that these processes in the box here will need to be tuned to work for those substrates and for those applications to give those performances. So that's something that we will continue to innovate. If, while that happens, this can be part of the hybrid. So this comes from conventional semiconductor electronics and the rest comes from the uh, flexible electronics. So together, these can provide the functionality that is required uh, for a lot of these applications. Uh, just And just from a, where we fit in, uh, we are part of the FlexTex Alliance. Uh, we were one of the early and uh, partners of Flexi. We worked with IT Kanpur on proof of concepts for different areas related to flexible electronics using flexible substrates. We are also part of the Smart Films Consortium in Purdue. Uh, and we use all of these exposures to look at uh, which areas are coming up, which areas are seeing uh, growth. And that's something that we will try to bring back into how uh, Flexi Center can help the community here in uh, India more to develop uh, flexible electronics into a uh, technology that can go mainstream. And that's all I had for today. Thank you, Suraj. Uh, thank you for the details uh, and uh, the thoughtful uh, insights uh, in, in your presentation. Suraj, I have one question quickly because we are running yes. late, but I still want to ask one question. And I will request uh, my colleague uh, Gagan Wansal to basically increase the time for five to 10 minutes. Yeah, what yeah, sure, sir. Yeah, thank you, Gagan. Thank you. What are the important and critical steps forward you see to enhance the momentum manufacturing of flexible electronics by printing in India? How do you see that? Because you have a so, lot of you have a lot of role role experience at the organization. Yeah, uh, I think the uh, and I think you will hear all of us in this panel say the same thing. We need to tie it to the application and the ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
there are things in the india ecosystem today that have some traction i think uh, people talk about uh, healthcare right and today with uh, covid related uh, uh, fears and there is going to be a lot of testing that's going to happen for millions of billions of people for the next few months how can how can a cheap application come out that would be something uh, we as we are while we are still looking for a killer app right this mm-hmm. is a good inflection to look for a killer app uh, so to me uh, we we need a killer app for this to grow what what is that killer app uh, to me i think we will have to find the answer in healthcare we will have to look for something in some strategic area maybe infrastructure right how do you do predictive maintenance we have all these aging dams and bridges and things like that which have were built 100 maybe 200 years ago right can we do remote monitoring of that cheaply right a dollar a sensor stick it somewhere and check it once a month things like that right are there uh, are there applications like that which can scale and then the third point of this is scale you need to take it out of the proof of concept into scale how can we do millions and billions of this those are the ways that this will get out of r&d and lab into mainstream and manufacturing you will need to find an application you will need to find something that is of importance and strategic interest which can be supported by the ecosystem and can be done in millions and billions so these are my three steps thanks thanks uh, thanks suras for your recommendation and thoughts now uh, i invite mr paul smith i hope that uh, paul you are still awake it is what is the time there <laughs> it's uh, 3:15 uh, no 3:25 sorry <laughs> sorry to put you on camera but we really appreciate your commitment mm-hmm. to come on and the I have panel. a lot of coffee mm-hmm. so i'm doing okay yeah so just a brief introduction of mr paul smith paul has been in the semiconductor industry for 36 years he started in the industry in silicon valley as a process engineer at siemens microelectronics in 1984 moved to applied materials in 1989 and in plasma processes and gradually moved into the product management In 2011, he became a senior vice president and general manager of the Silicon Valley location for Comet Plasma uh, Technologies. Paul has contributed to multiple patents in the semiconductor manufacturing equipment process technologies. Uh, we are eager to hear you, uh, Mr. Paul. I have one question. Uh, the 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 uh, in in advance, basically, if you try to answer during your presentation, that how the Comet can help enabling the 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 printable electronics. uh in a cost effective manner because you have lot of experience basically in in uh, in, in in related elements involved in printable electronics paul up to you uh, thank you very much so here um and thank you for the invitation um uh, time time is of the essence for for india and for flexible and printed electronics and uh, um i think it's it's important that I like Dr. Iyer's presentation about the 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 small percentage contribution today in the large blue sea of opportunity um and I can see that um uh taking taking fast steps um to to innovate right innovation has two limitations um one one is imagination and uh these are the killer apps that we need to look for this is in our imagination and the second part is is to technology to to enable that imagination and innovation and so i think this is this is some the reason why we partnered with nc flexi to um uh, install some equipment there with basic process enabling technology um and so i'll talk a little bit about it Well, Comet is a, a global company. Um we've been around for uh, more than 70 years. We develop and produce um some innovative high-tech components in the X-ray and radio frequency area. And so these are core infrastructure kind of technologies, not necessarily um uh a large systems, but um we we partner well with universities and and uh, institutes and then 
um, take advantage of global trends and work together with them to develop. And this is really why we became a partner in NC Flexi. Um, the group that I work for is the Plasma Control Technology Group. Um, and I'm based in San Jose, California. The company is a Swiss company. Um, and so we are, we're number one in our industry for vacuum capacitors and matchboxes, which are used primarily in the semiconductor display and uh, solar industries for plasma processes. And then in the x-ray systems business, we're in the top three and we have you know, 3D CT systems that are vertically integrated like our plasma control technology that allows you to see inside to see what what may be wrong and what you can do to fix it without um, destroying the devices. So it's non-destructive testing inspection. And then we also do these x-ray modules, which are customized uh, uh, tubes and power supplies that can be integrated into many systems, which are used for security, um, uh, aerospace, automotive markets that, that go and look at um, you know, welds and, and different um, industrial elements, um, but they're custom modules for um, the OEMs who are making larger equipment. And Comet is mostly an OEM company. So we sell to OEMs like Applied Materials um, uh, and we work in, uh, in plasma control and in x-ray. We cover all these industries um, and participate in the semiconductor, flat panel batteries, science and research, solar, industrial medical, and, and as we talked about uh, earlier, we heard many medical applications coming up looking for killer apps. Um, uh, broadcast communication is something that Comet's been involved with for many, many years. And then uh, we also contribute into medical MRI systems. So um, uh, as uh, Dr. Iyer pointed out, the, the market is, is large and it's getting larger. Um, over the next decade, you can see the market grow from, say, 41 billion up to 74 billion. And I think it's, it's important to start now and act fast for India to, to gain a larger share in that market above the 1% to get it to, to 5% in a decade. And we can do that for both internal growth and, and export growth of new technologies. So, um, I think the, the manufacturing and innovation in India, in, in India needs to uh, really focus on this market. And I think there's great opportunities there. And uh, uh, some of the, the biggest growth here is in the, the display business as shown uh, in the chart on the left um, and, and displays on the chart on the right are, are very big and flexible displays. And, they need flexible components for the flexible displays. And I think there's, there's areas in there that uh, we, can, we can develop and continue to grow there. So um, for uh, some other applications, you know, flexible market is going, um, uh, the Tesla battery is an example, and quantum skate, flexible separators inside the, the batteries. These are, these are, rapidly changing innovative processes that are being done in atmospheric conditions and changing for cost, for high volume manufacturing. Um, these are, are key things for the flexible market is, is do it fast and do it inexpensive and, and continue to innovate. Every step of the process needs to be considered um, and I don't know if anybody had an opportunity to look at the Tesla Battery Day presentations online. They're, they're um, available online. But they took a simple battery and they thought about all the problems and they re-innovated and removed a lot of cost from that architecture. And so that's what we need to do here. Um, so many different applications, killer applications on flexible transistor circuits being built on them, uh, a special, you know, energy harvesting, um, as Vinod said, you know, how do you harvest the energy? How do you store it? Um, and then manage it effectively. Um, all the circuits to do that need to become more cost efficient and more energy efficient and also 
um, produced in large enough volumes to offset the, the maybe, maybe lower performance. Um, but it, it, it's important to understand the perspective of performance. You can have a very, very efficient um, solar cell, for instance, um, but the cost of that solar cell for a local application or a, a, a large installation may be too high. You probably need it on the flying aircraft, a very highly efficient um, uh, cell to run that device overnight in battery storage. But in general, for, for general applications, you can't use those devices. So development in the flexible market in these areas is critical. Um, and this is where the innovation has to come in. All right, so um, plasma is, is something fun. I've been working with it, with it for many years in the semiconductor and microelectronics areas. Um, it, it offers uh, opportunities to, to change extreme conditions. Plasma, as you know, is a, the, the, a state of matter that, that helps you create reactions at lower temperatures and in, in unique conditions. In the semiconductor space, um, low pressure, low throughput, high precision. Um, you can work with very expensive materials to create unique and high value, high tech parts. Um, in flexible areas, you have to look at different processes, right? Where you're, you're treating these roll to roll, these web systems. Um, it's a high pressure atmospheric process, um, high throughput, it's moving inexpensive materials, more commodity products, but you still need the, the innovation and the extreme that plasma can, can apply in a single step to change the adhesion, to change the material property, to, to improve or solve. It's a complex problem, but can be solved in a very simple, cost-effective fashion. And that's our challenge. How do we solve cost, uh, complex problems with cost-efficient uh, solutions? So atmospheric plasma is, uh, is something uh, different. It's a different type of plasma than I've worked with for many, many years. <clears throat> I've had the uh, opportunity to, to partner with one of my customers, um, and I'll talk about them in a little bit as we work here with, uh, with NC Flex E. But what, what we're looking at is, is getting relatively high electron temperature and density, but do it um, at room temperature low temperatures. Um, and we do it for, for simple things to activate surfaces, maybe remove some organic layer or organic contamination, um, reduce or eliminate static electricity, remove moisture, or just slightly modify a surface to enable better bonding for the next step, the next application. If you're going to uh, bond a metal a thin flexible metal to you know a, a PTE film, then that adhesion, that that connection needs to be very good in the beginning, and it needs to be long lasting. And if you're going to do it on stretchable materials, then that the interface to make that circuit work in a stretch stretchable application is critical to get it right the first time and still do it you know effectively and cheaply. So these are um, the areas here where an atmospheric plasma could actually improve your process in a in a roll to roll type application. But in order to get there, um, as I talked about, the innovation needed, um, and, and this is the partnership that that I have with my customer and NC Flexi, this collaboration that we started. ELU is a Korean based company who uh, is uh, going to provide an atmospheric plasma system to help us you know, get to the innovation point and, and create the fast failures or fast solutions. Before you get your ideas into a roll-to-roll -roll system, you need to try a lot of different technologies and applications. You know, if you have to remove these organic contaminations, it's too late if you're already doing it in a roll to roll and you realize, oh, this, this is a, a yield problem for me. This is a, 
a, a functionality problem. So to do, to learn fast and to fail fast and find good solutions, I think having access to different technologies in a singular standpoint so you can understand it before you integrate it is critical. And I think uh, NC Flexi is doing this, providing this service to, to India in the industry format and in the uh, educational format in the university. So it's a unique opportunity for ELU and for Comet and, and I feel also for, for India um, to have access to something. So this is just an example of what uh, ELU's uh, system will do. It's, a, it's an atmospheric plasma system. It, it does a, a 2D treatment of a, a small uh, sample up to 350 by 120 by 50 millimeter of, uh, of material safe, compact, easy to use, kind of one push and you can treat your surface. Um, and uh, it's got also integrated into it the Comet RF system, uh, which is an industrial RF system made you know, for these applications to operate efficiently and repeatably and reliably over a long period of time. So it gives you good temperature control, gives you higher radical density, there's no bombardment, no surface damage, and uh, it, it can and should be used in not only in semiconductor processing, but also very much so in flexible processing. And I think your roll-to-roll -roll system also has some atmospheric plasma in there already, but to get on that, before you get on there with your new materials and your new devices and your new applications, you need to get some trial and error. And I think this, this tool will be, you know, instrumental in helping your scientists get to the right thing, the right answers. So removing contamination with oxygen plasma, cleaning, ashing, descom, this, this treatment of, you know, um, atmospheric plasma can, can change a surface from, you know, hydrophobic to hydrophilic and, and change its properties to increase the surface energy and improve bonding for multiple process steps. And so the general applications for this, um, cleaning, activation, etching, uh, atmospheric etching as opposed to vacuum etching, um, modifying roughness, uh, changing roughness of a surface or, or providing a more uh, repeatable surface roughness. Um, you can do ashing, uh, removal of photoresist or, or patterning materials, organic materials, um, and you can also etch with the proper gases um, at atmospheric pressure. Um, and then there's this, the hydrophobic nano coatings that could be deposited on a surface to, to make it more reliable in the long-term application. So um, the bottom line is not necessarily in, installed at NC Flex E, that'll take development, but the top line will be uh, uh, delivered uh, with the equipment. And so, you know, Comet and ELU both look forward to this collaboration with NC Flexi and you, the industry partners, to, to help you enable this innovation to, to provide a, a piece of that technology to solve a piece of the problem. And uh, uh, we look forward to this future collaboration for many, many years to come. So, uh, Dr. Kumar, thank you very much for this invitation and the opportunity to present. And I, I look forward to working with uh, your industry partners and uh, ELU does as well. Um, ELU, by the way, is a, is a Korean startup company and my customer. So I really want to thank them for, for engaging uh, with us and with NC Flex. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, Paul, for a nice presentation and uh, giving your thought and sharing your thoughts uh, how to produce complex uh, electronics or circuits in a cost effective manner by using some method of uh, you know using the low cost material thank you very much uh, we will come back to the question if the time permits let me invite uh, dr ram prashant gadir i want to share his views on the topic just a brief introduction to ram prashant uh, dr ram is co-founder and CEO of Space Foundry INC US. Previously, he was a principal investigator uh, at NASA 
Research Center, California, and a staff scientist with University Space Research Association. He obtained his PhD from Dublin City University, Ireland, and material science and MS in material science uh, from PhD College of Technology, Coimbatore. The Space Foundry founded in 2016 in a NASA spin-off based in San Jose, California. So Ram, you have your proper time. We are running late. I have already taken the permission for uh, increasing 10 minutes time, but, but I request to be in, in time. Sure, Go sure. Ahead. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sudhir, and thanks, everyone. Uh, can you hear? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, uh, so I'm going to talk about um, uh, more on the market adoption of uh, printable electronics. So, uh, you know, Space Foundry is an early stage uh, hardware startup. Um, we are basically selling equipment uh, to printed electronics um, customers. And uh, we have been kind of uh, doing a lot of uh, market research and, you know, trying fundraising uh, in, in Silicon Valley for hardware and electronics is, is like, you know, close to impossible these days. Uh, so I, I wanted to bring some of our uh, you know, experiences and, and discuss on this crucial aspect, which is market adoption of printed electronics. So uh, before we get into that, I, I wanted to kind of um, uh, discuss copper here because copper is one of our primary focus. Printing of copper is one of our primary focus, but I want to talk in general about copper before getting into the printed electronics. Of course, for printed electronics, copper is, is a holy grail. Um, you know, I'm not gonna go technical in details why copper uh, is needed, you know, for that, like all we need to do is just look back at 1997 where Intel and IBM independently uh, developed this copper interconnect that totally transformed the semiconductor industry. Uh, I want to bring in a different perspective, uh, more on a uh, geopolitics of copper uh, and, and the future how copper is going to uh, drive the future of printed electronics. So if you look at the conventional cars, uh, the copper needs are about 18 to 50 pounds. Uh, and you go to from an uh, internal combustion engine to a hybrid electric vehicle, it's about four times. And then you go completely to a battery electric vehicles, it's close to 10 times, you know, 180 pounds of copper is needed. And similarly, you go from a hybrid electric bus to a battery electric bus, you are increasing from 200 pounds to 800 bus pounds for each vehicle. Remember in the next 20 years, a lot of countries, including India, has set a target to eliminate um, most of the diesel run vehicles from the streets and majority of petrol um, you know, run vehicles as well. So that means um, a lot of uh, copper is, is definitely needed for manufacturing these electric vehicles, but that's not the only challenge here. You know, the, there needs to be huge grid level infrastructure that needs to be upgraded. Uh, electricity distribution network, currently it's all uh, unidirectional flow. Um, you know, so the in distribution network need to be uh, upgraded to allow bi-directional so that you can charge and discharge uh, the cars because, uh, you know, there's currently, you know, to maintain the power, there's a lot of power electronics involved uh, in this aspect. And, and also primary and secondary substations that are need, needed to be upgraded and, and charging stations need to be there all, you know, across the country, right? So all these are gonna cost a lot of copper. And moving on to the uh, renewable energy where you know, solar and wind turbine, again, copper is needed for power generation, transformers, heat exchangers. They're talking roughly about five tons of copper uh, per megawatt of power generation you know, for the uh, hardware uh, that is needed. So whether it's um, a renewable energy or a, a electric vehicle, Copper is uh, is the only enabler, and uh, I'm not gonna, you know, talk about the uh, way we have uh, shut down the one of the country's largest uh, copper smelting plant. But uh, this is a geopolitical game here, and unfortunately, we need to be aware of this. This the copper is going to be the few, uh, future. Uh, you know, it's like the fuel, uh, like the you know petroleum for the next 100 years. So even uh, Saudi Arabia started investing uh, in copper mining, 
And unlike uh, the oil industry, copper actually, you know, 50% of global supply comes from about 20 mines. And Chile is one of the largest, uh, uh, you know, exporter of copper. Or, um, you know, some of the challenges are that the copper yield, uh, you know, per ton has been consistently decreasing. It used to be 1.5% per ton, now it's 0.7. In future, they are predicting 0.5%. So if, if all the countries are interested in eliminating the you know, internal combustion engines and upgrading their uh, electricity infrastructure uh, and going for renewable energy, copper demand is gonna skyrocket and, and the supply is gonna diminish. Um, so coming to our printed electronics business, uh, you know, just the price of bulk and silver co copper and uh, silver, just have a look like you know, silver price today in India is about 66,000 rupees per kilo, whereas copper is uh, about uh, 600 rupees. It's 1% one, 1 of silver. Whereas if you look at the ink, you know, all the people working in printed electronics will know that silver ink, copper ink costs more or less the same. In fact, copper costs more than silver, uh, mainly because copper oxidizes and uh, you want uh, a uniform distribution of nanoparticles so that copper can be, you know, you get a uniform film, you can uh, sinter it at a much lower temperature. So there's a lot of chemistry that goes on in, in preparing the copper ink. So as a, a industry, when you look at this uh, number, it doesn't really make sense. Why would somebody go to printed electronics, uh, you know, when you can use uh, bulk copper? Uh, if you know, fortunately, that's not the case. There are a lot of niche application where printed electronics is, is going to be the future. Uh, otherwise, Space Foundry won't be in business today. Um, I wanted to talk is on the in mold electronics, um, where uh, you know, cars are going for 100% electric, and then you have all the form factor weight reduction coming in. Uh, I think aluminum, there's still challenges, you know, uh, copper is way better than aluminum. So we have a project coming up with uh, NC Flexi on this, uh, and that's uh, supposed to start hopefully by January 2021, where we would like to um, look at the possibility of printing copper directly on the uh, molds uh, so that uh, we can use copper, just use the right amount of copper rather than, um, you know, in a large quantity. Uh, Space Foundry is actually, uh, you know, working, as I mentioned, working on copper because, uh, you know, like, if you look at the current state of the art, uh, state of the art printers, they use quality ink. The printer can only print, it can only disperse the ink uh, in a pattern, but you really need good quality ink, and then you also need to cure. Um, whereas, uh, you know, what we do is we eliminate the need for high quality ink and also eliminate the curing process. Ours is a dry printing. And, uh, you know, we have borrowed this concept, uh, you know, plasma process from the semiconductor industry where you can really precisely tune the material properties by using plasma process. So we can print a conducting copper just by using a very simple salt solution. You don't need uh, um, you know, highly uniformly dispersed nanoparticles, dispersing agents, so many of these things. Um, so there's over 100% cost reduction just on the ink. So that means you know, we eliminate the uh, real you know, ink dependency. So the supply chain is, is going to be crucial uh, that will decide the market adoption. And so this is one of our uh, printer. We have been selling the equipment to universities and federal labs. Um, so uh, we can print conductors and also dielectric coatings. It basically, it's a multi-material printer. The technology disrupts both the equipment and the ink industry because you know we can take low-grade ink uh, and, and rely on the plasma process, which the semiconductor industry, you know, which is the bread and butter for the semiconductor industry. Uh, and uh, we can print, uh, you know, electronic materials. So we just got one of our apparatus patent granted and we have several uh, in the pipeline under review. 
So we have installed several printers. And uh, so one of the uh, advantages is that these uh, printheads can be like printer can be standalone or it can also be mounted on a robotic arm. So Nextflex is a, a consortium in, in San Jose. It's similar to NC Flexi. Um, it's primarily funded by Department of uh, Defense and uh, uh, all these players, you know, including Comet and I believe uh, app Applied Materials and a lot of uh, corporates are, are members of this consortia. So we have installed this printer print head uh, at um, and Nextflex and uh, here is a robotic arm. So we are, uh, I'm hoping to have a good uh, marketing video made in, in January. So we are demonstrating to a bunch of people there in January. Uh, so we have just demonstrated a multi-material conductor and a, a dielectric that can be printed sequentially. So moving on uh, to other uh, applications, um, these AR VR devices. You know, if you look at that, it's, they look like TV sets of uh, 70s and 80s, really bulky, uh, with uh, less form factor. So uh, we have been talking to a lot of these corporates, uh, and all of them have, you know, are working on flexible circuits because they need to. Uh, um, have flexible circuits to have these uh, AR VR devices that can go around the head. Um, you know, uh, I think somebody mentioned about it. So it's 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 you know, for these devices, it's it's additive is is still not uh, uh, being. They they are exploring, but uh, they're just using laser cutting of of copper foils. Uh, but they have a lot of interest um, in in uh, printed electronics, and and we are in discussion and. Uh, you know they have like large team on printed electronics so that they can just uh, go completely additive for the flex circuits and another example i wanted to bring here is google's uh, verily where they are working on a smart contact lens so basically this lens uh, when mounted on your eye it can continuously monitor glucose in the tears and, and communicate the data so that means uh, this uh, lens has a biosensor. It also has a, a chip and an antenna that can communicate. So this is a really soft, low TG plastic. So you cannot use uh, the existing manufacturing technology to put down these circuits and, and sensors on a low TG plastics, which is not even planar. This is a non-conformal substrate. So additive manufacturing, you know, additive uh, printed electronics is going to be the, um, uh, you know, real game changer for this and kind of, you know, uh, they've already been uh, working on a, a range of uh, additive technologies. Uh, one other example I wanted to bring in here uh, is on the uh, uh, neonatal ICUs. As I mentioned, we are part of a, a member of a Nextflex a consortium in San Jose. So Nextflex in partnership with GE has actually um, developed a flexible ECG. So this is going to be uh, available in the market pretty soon and they are uh, kind of uh, working on uh, uh, some pilot studies so that uh, we don't have to put through these uh, kids uh, with the torture of having multiple wires plugged in um, in their bodies. So these are some of the examples that I kind of wanted to mention where uh, printed uh, electronics is, is going to be the only way forward. Just because the nature of substrates are different, for example, one other example I kind of wanted to mention um, is, yeah, is on the- So just if you wrap up quickly. Yes, yes. Uh, it's on the, you know, the device, basically when you go for additive manufacturing, uh, precision becomes challenging. Uh, so when you're 3D printing something and you want to print an antenna, for example, you can't use conventional uh, technology. For example, an aircraft panel, a large panel being uh, additively manufactured can be adopted with other technologies easily. So um, you know, that's one challenge. And another thing is on the low TG plastics, then the ink supply chain and also the equipment supply chain. So that, that's another uh, important thing because lot of, uh, you know, these roll-to-roll -roll manufacture and everything is kind of more or less well-established. But if you look at 
inkjet and aerosol jet it is still emerging and there are like um, not many large players available for volume manufacturing if you look at uh, um, some of these aerosol inkjet companies they are probably you know 30 to 40 or 50 million dollar maximum revenue whereas these large player equipment companies like applied they are already in you know 15 to 20 billion dollar per revenue so there's some of these challenges that will come and and consortia like nc flexi will really help uh, in playing a major role in transitioning from uh, lab scale to uh, pilot studies for volume manufacturing i just wanted to show a couple of slides so here you know some of the installations copper printer directly without any nanoparticle synthesis no drying uh, no curing so a wide range of materials can be printed Uh, using this technology, and we also got some uh, PR. So we, you know, started this work uh, out of garage in in Palo Alto, uh, and moved on to a larger facility now. So this is uh, the contact info, uh, if you like, and uh, yeah, that is thank about you, it. Thank you, thank you uh, for uh, deep technological insights and your recommendation. Thanks a lot. Uh, now uh, as we know that after having such a stimulating presentations discussion one would have some questions or comments on the points uh, made by speaker as we are running late uh, i would uh, uh, still give some time to the panelists if they want to ask one or two question each other basically somebody has the question otherwise we will uh, move forward uh, in the interest of the time i have one question uh, to 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 ravi ji ravi ji you have lot of experience uh, globally and india also you explain the whole gamut of the printable electronics okay now that if uh, if i ask you to suggest how can nc flexi help industries in promoting new businesses in the field of printable electronics in india what do you say that how do you see that Oh, you you are on mute. Sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. I would really suggest um, see as as uh, Suraj mentioned earlier, uh, the key is to develop scale and pick applications that give you significant scale. Because if you start doing that, then you start creating uh, sort of a critical mass that you can build around. I mean, a simple example for in in the case of. you know more traditional electronics was the emergence of a uh, of the mobile phone and if you look at unit volumes um it's the highest unit volume uh, product single product in the industry and so the question that i would ask is what is the mobile phone of the uh, printed electronics industry and you really need to um what the advantage that nc flexi has i would say is that you get to see pretty much the entire cross cut of what's out there because you you really see the whole breadth of applications that are coming your way you 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 know you see early stages of it and so i would encourage the team to really look at um what is likely to have legs and the things that typically have legs is that you've got to have uh, you know a, a real you know pull in in the marketplace uh you have to have the numbers in other words the uh, the the, uh, the sheer adoptability if you want to call it that of 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 the technology and and then it's better if you can piggy back on uh, a already established infrastructure um and if you're able to piggy back on an established infrastructure in some way shape or form uh, you know so graphics printing it's already established in the marketplace so how can you know how can the uh, how can nc flexi piggyback or 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 the industry overall piggyback on that and integrate electronics into into that infrastructure number one um you know the more traditional electronics manufacturing how can you <clears throat> enable a lot more of hybrid uh, flexible electronics uh, manufacturing in india that, that's the other question so you know the, the combination of picking identifying the right application and then really uh, developing scale and the way you develop scale is you know you minimize your upfront capex 
uh, upfront capex is a big barrier mm. to to rolling things out if you can piggyback on existing infrastructure you lower your upfront capex you lower your upfront capex you minimize the friction of pulling something into the marketplace thank you ravi ji thank you very much for your suggestion uh-huh. we will uh, uh, take your recommendation uh, we can take one more question if anybody uh, would like to ask from the panel vinod ji want to say something looks like you are on mute uh, I, no no i just wanted to congratulate the panel uh, my fellow panelists uh, excellent presentations uh, and some of them were in depth i saw there was a comment saying can we go deeper and yeah, I, yeah some, I have, of did, some of you did respond uh, in some yeah, i have responded here yeah. <laughs> right uh, the only other comment i would have is you made a great beginning with uh, associating uh, with elsina Uh, you know, we are a body of uh, members who've been in electronics manufacturing for a long time. Mm-hmm. We could repeat that with some of the other business support organizations, uh, because I think and I think this. Surely, we know we will do that. We will certainly do that. And then, uh, thanks for connecting us. That we have started with the LC Nice Series One, and we have planned that next series in uh, in first quarter. And definitely, we'll go further, like you are suggesting. Thank you very much. So, at the in the interest of the time, at the last but not the least, I would like to invite Mr. Gagan Vansal, Co-Chairman, Northern Region LC Nice and BPTDK India Private Limited, for his concluding remarks. Few words about him. Mr Gagan Vansal is a graduate in electronics and telecommunication and holds a master degree in business administration he has more than 24 years of experience in electronics industry and has worked for brand like Siemens Apcos and TDK more important Mr Vansal is associated with Elsina for the last 8 years as an active member of the Elsina executive committee and has been a member of task force on electronics component manufacturing or bringing attention to the long standing problem of adequacy of investment and manufacturing capability in india over to you vansal ji thank you very much for your presence and give us of the time 10 minutes more to the panel uh, thank you uh, mr uh, professor sudeep uh, first of all you know i would like to deeply thank professor ayer and uh, yourself uh, dr sudeep for giving us uh, valuable insights to this uh, lesser known field of flexible electronics as we know that the present uh, market that we have is only about 1% and thanks a lot also to all the distinguished uh, panelists and my fellow industry leaders for sparing your valuable time and insights uh, this afternoon for this very interesting session i'm sure this will start a new uh, beginning for this era of flexible electronics uh, as we conclude you know some points which have come out very openly and very clear which i would like to summarize you know first of all after a long time electronics manufacturing is now uh, you know getting its due it has been identified as uh, mr sharma mentioned you know not only as a vertical but as a growth enabler uh, due to the heavy influx of uh, of outflow of uh, forex it needs one of the highest attentions under this make in india and atmanirbhar program uh, the segment has the capability to improve the gdp of the country as a whole and the segment can also generate substantial employment and overall uh, help in improving the well-being of the people at large secondly uh, we all know that the indian electronics manufacturing started with the production of televisions way back in 80s uh, then it was energy meters in the 1990s next we moved to smaller equipments like led bulbs and now we are only assembling mobile phones uh, what we have seen is that with the awakening of the government and some new schemes of pli and specs for the first time we are seeing interest in new segments as we know that some companies have also shown interest in smd components and also some uh, semiconductors on well, uh, very recently as uh, mr shama mentioned you know there is a expression of interest uh, which has been invited by the government on setting up a semiconductor fab so so the message is that india is evolving and evolving fast now with the present leadership uh, at the center and now looking to the demands uh, created by the applications in the field of digital and uh, energy transformation which is the talk of the town electronics is taking a completely new shape uh, with applications like uh, 5g artificial intelligence uh, machine learning robotics uh, sensors miniaturization and increased functionality is order of the day and uh, this is where flexible electronics will play a very very crucial role 
and as we have a live case already we see some activity in india um, one of the large korean manufacturers is setting up a plant for displays uh, where flexible electronics would play an important role sharma ji is also trying to set up something in india uh, today professor ayer and our panelists have been found us of many interesting applications i'm sure our industry colleagues have uh, taken note of it and some of them are already working on it there could be many many more for example in areas like haptic devices which are touch based automotive screen displays cameras uh, personal entertainment devices monitors flexible solar cells which was already mentioned etc etc so multiple applications you know although the uh, first patents for flexible electronics when i was researching were filed somewhere in the earlier 20th century but it is only around 1960s when this uh, technology was actually developed by the japanese you know materials are clearly at the heart of it as uh, mr ramprasad just mentioned to us copper being one of the uh, copper and silver being one of the prime uh, points over here but with a strong proof that soft electronics including batteries you know uh, i am sure that the industry will witness a fusion of wearable technology with flexible electronics which i believe could give that critical mass that we have been talking about right so this could be one area um, organic sensors could be in another area uh, which features like gesture recognition contactless control and biometric sensors i believe these two or three areas could give us that critical mass from where we could uh, make a start and uh, take this to the next level okay from the present level where we are just at about 1% so we are uh, quite confident that the indian industry will also graduate to these new applications they will move ahead from the primitive ones like uh, only led manufacturing and mobile phone assembly they will go to the next level some established and startup companies are already working we urge more and more industry players to venture into this uh, and in this era uh, and in this area consortia like the nc flexi uh, will play a vital role you know they can play a very vital role to help to develop the ecosystem and uh, with their expertise they can help to transition a project from uh, uh, lab scale to pilot studies and then to volume manufacturing i believe the all the support that the industry needs is available the government is supporting there is investment there is capability and i urge all my industry colleagues to uh, leverage this uh, expertise and knowledge and uh, uh, help us to do something good for the country uh, in the coming times this is our humble plea in the end i would uh, like to thank everybody for your valuable time and inputs let's collectively resolve to get on to this bandwagon of uh, the next generation applications and next generation technologies as we say in our company you know let's attract tomorrow uh, the technologies of tomorrow uh, the business of tomorrow and the generations of tomorrow and make this country great again the golden bird of yester years so in the end i wish you all a merry christmas and a very happy new year and till next time stay healthy stay safe and stay positive i uh, thank you very much thank you thank you thank you, thank you mr vansal very encouraging words i think we have come to the end of the of this event and once again i would like to thanks speaker for their interesting presentations discussion and the participants for the valuable following discussion i really want to extend my personal sincere thanks to raju goel ji i think he is not well because of him basically that uh, it it become possible we have made a lot of uh, a lot of uh, you know there is a lot of hard work uh, in in last week and from him and from his support to make this uh, event successful and definitely to the participant who has made this very successful i have seen always there was count more than 100 people uh, from the industry they were joining and they were listening that one thank you thank you very much to all of you thanks a lot thank you thank you thank you thank you very much sir it was you know wonderful learn watching all of you and i must also thank you know rajesh who has worked very hard on this yes absolutely he's the key driver in the team thank yeah. you so much to everybody thank yeah. you sir. thanks thank thanks you all. bye 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 thank you everyone and merry christmas yeah, yeah merry christmas merry christmas to you thank you for some sleep now <laughs> no work is just starting <laughs> okay yeah silicon valley starts early that's right Merry Christmas okay. everybody. Bye. 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 B
Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you to you, sir. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. No, we will yeah. have a chat and we will, we will, we will have a chat and we will have a sip together. <laughs> yeah, we should. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hey, Rajiv ji. Thank you so much. Now I can show my face. Yeah. I'm uh, ready to show. <laughs> But thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for a short notice. This support from Elsinia, we really appreciate. Yeah, yeah. And I was, I was really concerned when Rajesh told me you are not well. I was not disturbing you, uh, but I hope you are uh, fully. No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm okay, sir. I'm, and I don't have COVID, so that you know that way. I think I am very lucky. Thanks. So, but I'm, I'm fine. I'll be okay. I mean, I'm improving anyway. I'm fine. Thank you. I think it was a great event, and then as uh, we discussed and agreed with the proper preparation in the first quarter, we'll go to the part two and uh, the the in extended form. Yeah. Yes, and very good speaker. I mean, you know, you have really got some you know, excellent speakers on board. I must. Say. Yeah, I think. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, special thanks, you know, to Professor Ayer, sir. Thank you so much. I think I missed your part. Because I was you're welcome. You didn't miss much, but I must say that the support given was very professional. I am really impressed. Uh, okay. The way the panelists got an option to discuss, the way it was done. I, I say this when I compare it some other events I participated. So thank you, Rajesh, Rajesh ji. I think very nice. Rajesh, please show your face. Rajesh, yes. Is your is your uh, oh, Rajesh, camera working? Please show your face. Yes, ah. yes, yes, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comment, sir. Thank you. And thank you, uh, uh, Raju Goenji. Actually, it, uh, he was mentioning and uh, really appreciate the support from Elsinia. I, I'm really delighted to come across this organization and know more about it. Yeah. Right. It's, a, it's a privilege, sir. Thank you so much. And we will do it again. And we will do something more also. Let's try Excellent. to really I mean, you know, promote sure. manufacturing, you know, get some people to manufacture. Sure. Yeah. So let's sure. hope that. And Rajesh, you please share the details of all the participants, you know, with uh, uh, Dr. Sudhir also. Surely, so that, you know, he can also, you know, try to contact whoever he would like to. Surely, sir. Surely. Okay. Great, sir. Okay. Great. Right, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, and uh, have a nice evening. Thank, 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 thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please take care. Bye. Wish you very happy New Year. Yeah, thank you. Thank sir. you. They're closing the meeting now. Arman, ban kar dijiye.